It's been close to two years since Edward Snowden blew the lid off the surveillance story, not just at the National Security Agency in the U.S., but also at Britain's GCHQ. And it's taken almost that long for the U.K.'s Intelligence and Security Committee, the ISC, to figure out what to make of it all, so that an informed and responsible debate, as the committee put it, can take place on balancing the individual's right to privacy with our collective right to security. A couple of points on the authors of this report. ISC members are all appointed by the government. No one gets on that committee without the Prime Minister's approval. Secondly, committee members were supposed to know all about what the spies at GCHQ were up to, but they didn't. It took Edward Snowden to tell them that. The ISC's makeup and track record are part of the context of this story. And the committee's primary conclusions that GCHQ did not break the law, but that the law is not fit for purpose and needs rewriting, that the bulk collection of personal data is not a form of mass surveillance, those findings did not go down well with a lot of people who were close to this story. That includes Edward Snowden, who, having provided this British jury with all of the evidence, watched from Moscow as the verdict came in. Campaigning against bulk collection or advocating more encryption is, according to the ISC report, a win for the terrorists. And some of the more security-minded media outlets covering this story seemed to agree. If the politicians and the securocrats dealt in t-shirts instead of sound bites, theirs would probably say, keep calm and stop worrying about mass surveillance. Or is that bulk collection? Our starting point this week is London. Uh, and what we found is that the way in which the agencies use the capabilities that they have uh, is authorized, lawful, necessary and proportionate. Authorized, although the committee overseeing intelligence matters in the UK admits it did not know about it. Lawful, although the committee says the law is out of date and needs replacing. Necessary and proportionate, although any evidence of that in the committee's report was redacted. And in terms of the terminology, according to the committee, mass surveillance is out, bulk collection is in. They've tried to erect this kind of distinction between the two, and it's okay, and it's just bulk collection. It's not really mass surveillance, but it's really a false distinction that they're trying to make because what they've been doing is they've been collecting quite literally billions in excess of, you know, 50 billion communications events every single day, 600 million telephone calls. So the supposed difference between mass and bulk is that um, it's kind of everyone versus some number slightly less than everyone. The difference between the two terms is, 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 I think, probably mostly euphemistic, uh, but it also means that supposedly not everything is being scanned, um, but we have no real idea what bulk means, exactly who's been spied on and how much. In fact, what the government is doing is mass interception of every single communication in this country. Now, that interception is affected by a computer, yes, but that does not make it any less invasive and any less terrifying. In fact, a computer can do things that a human can't do. It can draw assumptions about you, analyse your movements, your relationships, your political preferences. And that's what the GCHQ's technology is doing. This is an incredibly detailed attempt to normalise mass surveillance. And why did that go unnoticed by the British media? I think that's the real question that, that begs answering. GCHQ certainly tried to get out front of the story. The day before the committee's report came out, the normally publicity-shy organization acted completely out of character, putting out a handy little guide on how to catch a terrorist with the help of technology. The Times, owned by Rupert Murdoch, published it. And while the Liberal Guardian, which broke the Snowden story, wrote of a parliamentary committee in a democratic country telling its citizens that they are living in a surveillance state and that all is well, the Times and its conservative cousins in print were zeroing in on civil liberties groups accused of valuing privacy over security. And whenever Glenn Greenwald, who helped break the Snowden story, appears on BBC's Newsnight program, things get testy. Committee, are you questioning their integrity? You seem to be saying that when eight politicians who actually are part of the British government, they're, they're members of parliament, get together and say something that it's somehow improper or it makes you strange or conspiratorial to dare question it as though... I think the overall sort of media like coverage of Snowden and, uh, uh, since, since 2013 has been fairly dire. The Guardian, of course, led on the story to start with and have stuck with it. BBC came into it very late. A couple of newspapers firmly stuck to the line that Snowden is a traitor who stole our secrets and put us all at risk. 
And now this taking a lot, lot of trust from, from the government and ISC on, on this. And I think what, what Snowden has shown us is that we can't entirely trust them. We need more oversight, we need more transparency. It's disheartening to see the UK media take the government's side on that debate. And particularly when oversight has been so weak, there are so few means for us to hold this government to account. And we rely so heavily on the media as the fourth estate to provide some element of accountability. And this was an opportunity for them to do that. And I think they failed in that seriously. When Glenn Greenwald was first contacted by Edward Snowden, the journalist considered the credibility of the source. Media consumers would be wise to do the same with the ISC, a committee which admitted it was out of the loop on surveillance, and which, in its report, professes surprise at something that most web users have understood for a while now, that a metadata trail can be just as revealing as reading someone's emails. We approached the ISC for comment and have yet to hear back. The worrying thing when you read the report is that it doesn't feel like it's been written by people who are really engaged with these issues or know a great deal about what's at stake. And that's really worrying because they will presumably fill in the gaps in their knowledge by talking to their defence sources or their GCHQ sources, which means they'll hear the things that those people want them to hear. They may be well versed in the, in the legal background of surveillance and everything else, but they certainly lack the insight to dig into it technically and, and uh, to understand what's really what's really going on at some levels. Well, I don't know that they've ever been all that credible, to be honest. These are people who have like a long history of being quite supportive of the UK's intelligence community. So if people are looking for them to kind of take the lead on, on these issues and on this debate, then they're looking in the wrong place. So a credibility-challenged oversight committee that failed to oversee what its spies were doing until Edward Snowden told them where to look produces a report with so many redactions that it exposes very little, apart from the committee's own limitations. There is a whole section entitled The Value of Bulk Collection, The Value of Mass Surveillance. And under three examples that the security services gave for how they use this information to avert terrorist attacks are all blanked out. Sentences that begin with, the security services keep this data for, end in blank, blank, blank. And we're told not to worry because GCHQ is acting in our best interests. And in fact, that is the gist of this whole report, actually. Trust us. We're doing what's good for you. And Britons waited 18 months for this report, so long that the Foreign Secretary, Philip Hammond, said it was time to move on from the debate before the report was even issued. The former head of GCHQ told the BBC the same thing. We should now, I think, have a moment of silence from Mr Greenwald and his supporters and Mr Snowden and his supporters. They've been running a guerrilla campaign against British intelligence. It's been harming our own security. And it's about time they stop that. Perhaps they don't watch the BBC in Moscow because two days later, there he was, Edward Snowden Skyping his way into the Nesta Future Fest conference in London, telling Britons that no matter what their government tells them, no matter how their media report the story, it's time to call a spade a spade. We have to call mass surveillance mass surveillance. We can't let uh, governments around the world redefine uh, and sort of weasel their way out of it by saying this is bulk collection. Um, bulk collection means all of your communications are being secretly intercepted. They are being stolen. But we have to at least say this is happening. We can't wish it away. We can't say it's something that it's not. On the download this week, our viewers on the coverage of the surveillance story in Great Britain. The majority of people have serious concerns about the overreach of surveillance, the lack of accountability, and the sheer cluelessness of our politicians on the issue. The ISC report does nothing to allay people's fears that the security agencies have a carte blanche to snoop on our most private communications, and that the oversight mechanisms are weak and ineffective. People are well aware that their phone and online conversations are subject to scrutiny and that long fought for freedoms are being eroded in the name of safety and security. The Intelligence and Security Committee isn't really up to the job. They don't have the knowledge or the understanding of the activities of GCHQ and others in order to be able to provide the proper oversight that is critically important. They said they were surprised that GCHQ used metadata rather than content. Surprised why? We've been telling them it for years. The ISC needs reform, 
It needs replacement, really, with people who know what they're doing, have sufficient intelligence, independence, and knowledge in order to be able to scrutinize the activities of the intelligence services properly.